in this video lecture we will look at an introduction to the course bacterial physiology previously this course have been offered in the name microbial physiology we will go into the basics what are the things we are going to learn in this particular course what is physiology it refers to understanding the life process that have been operating in an organism that is mediated through their structural components say for example if bacteria is present bacteria is having a flagella that is a structural component that helps in the locomotion so those functions together constitutes the common task of life for that particular organism so in a simpler terms it refers to the normal functions of a living organisms and their parts or their structures then specifically we look at into what is the meaning for bacterial physiology it deals about the cell structure nutrient assimilation metabolism that includes the anabolism and catabolism process that have been operating there in the organism and to learn about the genetic background guiding this life process so the genetic background here that refers to the replication transcription translation that we have studied there in the previous semester course that is in the molecular biology so in a microbial physiology or bacterial physiology it is understanding the bacterial metabolism and that could pave way for establishing a basic life process operating there in the higher organism very classical example is operation of certain metabolic pathways like glycolysis and tca these are all same as the one that have been operating in the bacteria it operates in the human systems also there won't be a much difference there. so the physiology helps in understanding the science in the following way how a cell grows multiplies with the availability of simple nutrients like carbon nitrogen oxygen and even the other forms of nutrients such as amino acids nucleotides etc how nutrients are transported into the cell from the environment that is mediated by various kind of transport or proteins that have been present there in the cell membrane then how cell respond to the changes that have been operating there in the environment cell can be present in a hypoosmotic environment or in a hyperosmotic environment under that particular conditions are all cells will exhibit some kind of response towards the process operating there outside to the cell how catabolism and anabolism are interlinked in an organism that is resulting in the growth of the organism before understanding about the bacterial metabolism we look at what is the importance of the bacteria with the living systems it's small in size that is it is having a high surface area to volume ratio in the right hand side you can able to see the different squares that have been shown there when you look at into the large square it is having a very low surface area to volume ratio however when you look at into the small square automatically the surface area to volume ratio is high so this is the way in which small sized bacteria also seems to have a very high surface area to volume ratio in other terms when the size is decreasing the surface area to volume ratio will be higher this helps a lot in the microbial metabolism microbes exhibit a faster growth rate and they are also having a high enzyme activity compared to that of the other organism these also favors their metabolism they are omnipresent and omnipotent omnipresent means they have been present everywhere that is they can be present in the soil even inside the human systems and they can be present in acidic condition they can present in alkali condition they can present in a salt run thus everywhere they have been present omnipotent refers to different kinds of potential abilities i will say a simple point every organism in this earth require oxygen for their respiration but bacteria doesn't require oxygen that is they can able to perform an anaerobic respiration process in which instead of oxygen oxidized the form of inorganic compounds such as nitrates are used as a terminal electron acceptor that is the reason why 
they can be present in different kind of locality. The next point is they have the ability to use a variety of substrate. A study says that a bacillus species can able to use at least some 300 different kinds of substrate and they have a unique property of anaerobic respiration that I have previously discussed. And the next point is related with the role of bacteria. They play immense role there in the environmental process, especially in the organic matter degradation, cycling of the nutrients, they play a major role. Say, community of structures or microbes are aiding in different kinds of process that have been explained there at the last point. That is, nitrification is a process that have been mediated by two different groups of organisms that have been present together as a community. That is, ammonia oxidizers and nitrite oxidizers that have been shown in the green as well as in the red color together perform the nitrification process and they serve as a community there in the soil system. This slides is a graphical representation of the whole syllabus. If you look at there, you can able to see unit 1, unit 2, unit 3, unit 4 and unit 5. Now I try to explain what are the things you are going to study under the unit 1. In the unit 1, you are going to look at into what are the nutrients that have been required for the microorganism. That is nutritionally how microbes can be classified, how the microbes are growing, what is the way in which the growth can be measured and then what are the different forms in which they can able to multiply. Say for example, sporulation is an important process that the gram positive organism. How these have been taking place? These are all explained that in unit 1. Now we come into the unit 2. The unit 2 is specifically related to what are all the various kind of transport systems that have been available there in the microbial cell, especially in their cell membrane, different kinds of nutrient transport systems will be present. They aid in transport of nutrients like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur there inside the cell system. So these things will be studied there in the unit 2. In unit 3, you directly look at into the biosynthesis of various cell structures. Say, we have seen how the nutrients have been taken inside, that is in the second unit. After that, these nutrients are how forming into different structures there in the cell. Say, for example, how a cell inclusion is formed, how a cell wall is formed, how a flagella assembly have been created there inside the bacterial cell. These are the things that you are going to study there in unit 3. When you look into the unit 4, it is entirely devoted to the unique process of the earth that is photosynthesis. You all know plants perform photosynthesis, but before plants, photosynthesis is a one that was first formed from cyanobacteria. They are all the oxygen evolving organism that have been present there from the ancient period. So we are going to see what, is, what are the various kind of photosynthetic mechanisms that have been operating or various cycles of photosynthesis operating there in the bacterial systems. And finally, the fifth unit is related to studying about the various pathways that are connected there with the metabolism, say glycolysis, TCA cycle, which you may have partly learned there in the biochemistry. Those things are all will be covered there in the fifth unit.